All right, welcome. We are live with the Q&A. Ask me your questions. My name is Douglas Dennis, the Alkaline Life Coach, and I just saw one question already come in. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. I appreciate that, whoever liked it. And keep on thumbs and up so that other people get notified that I went live. All right, awesome. So I'm done sharing it everywhere and I'm ready to get into this. Okay, awesome, so we've got our first question. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for asking. If you're coming in on the replay, you can also ask questions and I'll answer it later in the comments. All right, so let's get to the first live question. Hi, my name is Carrie, hello Carrie. And how can I become an alkaline herbalist? Wow, what an awesome question. Um, there's no real official training program for this. Unfortunately, that's, that's why I'm doing it to begin with. If there were a bunch of people out there doing this already, I probably wouldn't feel the need to. Um, the only reason that I'm focused so much on this is because I feel like it's, we talked about this in the last live, I feel like it's suppressed information and that it's not really out there available for anyone to find it. It takes years of digging and digging and digging and experimenting. So for you to jump into it and study it, in a formal way, I would love to help you, first of all, and there's no formal method because all of the formal systems in place in the universities, and this is uh, probably a conspiracy, but this is where all the misinformation comes from anyway. I mean, I went to the university and definitely never learned anything like this. so. What you could do is, I have a program, a 12-week program. That's the only program I know about out there, is I, the one I made. And I made it because there wasn't anything. Um, it's not necessarily about, specifically about alkaline herbalism. However, I could make a program for that, something like that in the future, if you're interested. I grew up on a farm and there are a lot of alkaline herbs growing wild when I was growing up and no one ever told me about that. So it would be really interesting to have a program for people to study herbalism. And Dr. Sebi mentioned all the books on herbalism out there are a lie. He hadn't found any of this information in books. So I think that's important to note. Most of the experimentation went, went on in the research village. Um, you could go to the Usha village in Honduras. I've never been there and I don't know much about it these days. However, I know that it does exist. I mean, I don't know what the travel restrictions are. I don't know how much it costs. Um, but I know that something is going on down there. And I'm trying to start something here to, in the US, meaning here, where people can, what I was doing before the you know what happened, I was setting up an event where you can come and detoxify and stay there because there's a lot of distractions. So I was working on something like this to help teach and help gather the right people and also other experts and maybe even doctors where you could come and do something like that. But unfortunately, I'm not giving up on that. However, things happened where travel and gathering is no longer allowed in a lot of places. And 
this is a shame, and that's... I could rant about that for a while, but I'll spare you. Okay, we got another question here. Hi Doug, good morning. Good morning to you as well. It's afternoon here, but that's wherever you are, welcome. And my vision gets blurry sometimes and I'm trying to avoid glasses. How could I strengthen my eyes? That is such a good question. I love how you're actually thinking and trying to avoid what most people just do without even questioning it. You're actually trying to do something naturally for yourself. That's awesome. And I commend you. Keep that, keep that part of your spirit alive. That's more important than any specific answer is just that questioning spirit. And let's see. So how could you strengthen your eyes? I have researched this a little bit. Now, I don't wear glasses, so I would probably be more interested in that. Uh, you know, I would know more about it for myself, but I do, I have researched this years ago. And there are some exercises you can do for your eyes to help strengthen the muscles that connect to your eye. And also, I studied psychology, so I do understand what is going on in your eye. Now, is, there's your eye itself, but then there's an optic nerve, and the optic nerve actually behind your eyes, and it crosses over, and it crosses to different uh, hemispheres of your brain. So there could be a problem with your eyeball, there could be a problem with your optic nerve, and, or there could be a problem, yeah, with the muscles around that's, that are controlling and focusing. So there are some things you can do, and there are exercises that, uh, it's been years since I researched this, but I'll try to show you. Um, you basically take your eyes to one side, and you look as far as you can, and I forgot how many seconds you're supposed to hold it. But you're supposed to do this every day, and, and like I can feel that my eyes want to stop, but you try to put, push them further, like look further and further away to that side. And then, now I need to rebrief myself, but then you do the other side. But I think, I want to say it's 15 seconds, 30 seconds, on each side. And then, and I believe you would do this with your eyes closed normally, but I'm keeping mine open just to show you what it is. And then you look over to that side. Now I'm looking as far as I can that way, and I can't really see, but I'm pushing my eyes over, 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 over. And I can feel I'm working out actually as I do this. Now you're going to also do down, and the same concept, and then you're going to do up, as well, and you're going to do uh, the inside. So this will help you. Now you're going to have to do that every day, and that will help to regain control of the muscles around your eye, and will should sharpen your vision. Now the other things I talk about, detoxing and everything like that, that would help if it's a problem with your optic nerve, then there could be mucus or something else congesting behind your eye or with your optic nerve or actually in your brain. So it really depends on what's going on. And I see some other questions rolling in. Thank you so much. And if you haven't hit the thumbs up yet, please do. I appreciate that. Okay. Felicia, or Carrie said, please keep going. Do what you're doing. I love your energy. Oh, thank you so much. I love your energy as well. And you know what? I can actually feel your energy live. That is, I won't go deep into the uh, extra sensory perception. However, there has been more research done on that, proving it, than there has been all the research done on aspirin. So there's actually more research done on ESP, extra sensory perception, than there's been on aspirin. Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating. Have you heard about that? I watched a seminar about that years ago, and they've been studying it since the 
for about a hundred years, probably even more. But I can feel your energy live. That's why I prefer going live rather than just recording this and editing it for you. Because when you're asking and even when you're just watching, it gives me feedback and uh, I appreciate that. So, Fala, Fala, how do I pronounce your name? I want to pronounce it uh, correctly. Especially since you have such good comments. So you have questions about cleansing the body and to rebuild the body with minerals? Or are you just reinforcing the, the lesson? Do you, is, is that a question about cleansing and re, rebuilding with minerals? So I appreciate your energy as well and respect to you as well. Thanks for tuning in. And Z83, oh, Corey said hi, hello. How's it going? Peace and blessings to everyone in here. That's nice of you. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling the good vibes flowing, that's for sure. Do you recommend a good brand of hemp oil? Great question. Um, I usually get, the popular brand out there is, most of it's from Canada, where I live anyway. So, um, it's, I think it's called Manitoba Harvest, and there's another one called Natural Something. And I forgot the brand I have right now. However, I did a video about CBD versus hemp oil versus weed. And I showed the brand of hemp oil that I have that I've been using right now. In that video, I showed it on camera. So if you want to know what I have right now, I would have to go look in the fridge. But... Uh, I don't want to break the, the momentum of the live stream. So you can check out that other video. And let's see. Hemp, I definitely do recommend hemp oil, though. Most of it out there seems to be pretty good quality. That seems to be something that isn't usually mixed with a bunch of chemicals, but you never know. Big love. Thank you so much. Love to you as well, sending out around the world. Uh, we can do this, we can do a, a Reiki exercise together. Imagine, okay, so I'm going to close my eyes during it, but so visualize a ball of purple, light purple energy. It's, well, I can feel it rising up my chakras, but just imagine the color. Just imagine the light purple. And it's shooting out, shooting out of your head, and it's surrounding your area like a blanket of peace and harmony. Now imagine this flowing around your county, around your region, around your state. Imagine this energy flowing out around the country and then around the world. If we all contribute to this vibration of light purple, lavender you could call it, and make the world a better place, just with our thoughts. And we're back. You can also go deeply into that and you can transfer that color to a gold. And you can feel this gold radiating from your chest, this energy. Now that's just a meditation exercise. I usually don't do that kind of thing on this channel, but if you, <laughs> if you feel it, if you feel it, then uh, you can request some more. I see some more comments rolling in. All right, someone said, I love the way you cook. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to hear that and I'll keep them coming. There are some recipes on the way still. 
How do you get rid of dandruff and scalp psoriasis? Great question, Corey. And I used to have that problem <laughs> also, so I understand. Also, it's super dry right now in where I live. Um, I think you're in, uh, in, if you're in Canada, it's probably really dry up there as well. You know, your lips can get chapped. I think, and here's another conspiracy for you that's probably easily proven, the dandruff shampoo and the products, moisturizers and all that junk garbage, is that's what's probably causing it. That's my first guess, is that the man-made artificial products are causing the dry skin and causing the skin to flake. But you want to remember that skin naturally flakes, and as new cells are born, old cells die. And different parts of our body are different, and the, the cells reproduce at a different rate, but skin cells are constantly renewing and constantly flaking off. So sauna and bath and should help this. Unfortunately, a lot of the water quality in our houses, in our cities, is not good quality. So we're not just getting water, we're also getting chlorine, fluoride, all kinds of stuff like that. And chlorine is especially dries your skin and dries, you know, the rest of your body. It's not even good to shower with chlorinated water because you breathe it in. Now, I mean, some of us can't necessarily stop that right away. There are advanced water filtration systems that can take, that are ex seriously expensive, that can take all the different impurities out of water, and that's just not in the budget for most people. So, what I would say, stop using whatever products you might be using. That's, for me, I assume that no one even uses it because I don't, but then I, rem I get reminded people spend so much money on these products that say anti-dandruff or that they say natural or it says hemp oil, but maybe there's like 1% hemp oil in it. So, First thing for a lot of people is you got to ditch those products. They're costing you a lot of money and they're not doing you any good. So you'll save money and you'll be healthier. Win-win situation, right? Okay, I see some more comments coming in. What would be my approach for helping someone with a brain tumor? Now, that's a serious question. I would help you, I would help them one-on-one -on -one, and I would want to speak directly to them because there's a lot, there's a lot uh, that comes to mind that would be time sensitive and also um, you would want to, there's a lot going on with that. It's not just about food or some kind of oxygenating exercise. It's also about psychology because some people aren't willing to follow something natural. Some people are, you know, that's a scary situation for a lot of people. There could be a lot going on. It's not just an easy answer. That would be something that I would take really seriously. And first of all, I would tell them that I'm not a licensed medical doctor because this isn't meant to replace medical advice and it's um, going to be totally different. I'm assuming it's going to be totally different. What I would say would be different than what a doctor or a hospital or a nurse or someone else might say. So I know there are some doctors that are doing something very similar to what we're doing here, but they're few and far between. I know that they do exist, uh, that there are some really good doctors that also know about what I'm talking about, 
but you know it's rare so there's a lot that man that's a long answer i would want to talk to them but basically stop eating and it's 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 uh it's a legal thing. It's a legal thing to comment on medication or not. I would be curious about what kind of medications they were taking, but I wouldn't legally be able to recommend that they not take them. So <clears throat> there would be a lot of, yeah, it's, it's a touchy subject. <laughs> it's a touchy subject and not for the right reasons either. It's touchy for legal reasons and not for health reasons. For health purposes, I would just say a lot, but you gotta be careful because, you know, there are lawyers out there looking to scam people, there are people out there looking to scam people and all kinds of stuff, so you gotta protect yourself. <laughs> and that is a very important question, so, I would say reach out to me or someone that knows about this. And let's see, there's more coming in. So I'm just checking, I'm just checking your question or your comments here on my iPad. And how long organic life said how long should people fast for deep healing and how often should we fast for general good health in my opinion? Great question. So, um, you can fast if you do it correctly, which, what does that even mean? What does that, what does correctly mean? Well, it means you're intaking enough hydration, which should be spring water, ideally, and you should be getting minerals so that you can live. Everything I talk about is about bioelectricity and oxygen. So you have to be getting enough oxygen and your blood needs minerals to get that oxygen to your cells. So breathing is important, yes, but also your body chemistry is important. Otherwise, you know, the nutrients could be just not getting where they need to go. And that's happening with almost everyone. So that's a real issue. Deep cleaning it through fasting is one of the real ways to fix it or to clean it out. And what, is, what, what does that even do? Well, it, your body does this naturally. Your body does this naturally. So when you stop feeding it artificial garbage, what I call garbage, what other people call food. I would not call that stuff food, personally. But stop intaking the artificial garbage and your body will automatically seek and destroy the chemicals and the toxins. So once your body runs out of this material or these foods, starches, your body starts eliminating the bad stuff the dead cells, the plaque, the artificial substances. And in nature, we would have the dead cells and we would have some mucus naturally, but that's it, a little. We wouldn't have the artificial foods. We wouldn't have the artificial medications and everything else to try to eliminate. So that's the hard work. So when people take more pills, when they're sick, it's breaking, it's the straw breaking the camel's back often. Is that maybe what they were taking originally for anxiety now is causing something else. I have, this is so frustrating. And some, I had some clients before who were, and everything's secret, I'm, I'm not going to name names or anything, but they're, ha they're having serious chronic problems, pain, inflammation, fibromyalgia, brain fog, what I'm, you know, it's gonna become death eventually, 
and I'm not wishing that on anyone. I'm not hoping that or anything. I'm just, uh, you know, that's science. What happens when these things aren't reversible and when the toxins build up? So when I, when I go back, go back through, backwards through the life and figure out what's happening here, a lot of times it can be traced back to some other issue that then they started taking some meds for, they got hooked on the meds because some of these things are habit forming and highly addicting even. If you, some of these things that I, that people are taking, I looked up the first, in the first second I saw, highly addictive, not effective after a couple months. And it's like, I asked this certain person, this was a long time ago, I'm just relaying it so that we can learn something. And how long have you been taking that? Years, years, almost 10 years. And the first thing I read about it is that it's dangerous, highly addictive, and it doesn't work after three months. And then someone's doctor is having them taking that for years, almost a decade. No! And then piles up, piles up. And then you need another medication to help with whatever that one caused. And then you need another one to help with what those other three caused. And then you've got your decades later, your sexual organs stop functioning, your brain stops functioning, you're in pain and don't even remember what good health even feels like. And that's the system we've got for, for a lot of people, is that it snowballs from one easily fixable problem and then the solutions make it worse. The solutions make it worse. So everything on this channel is about unlayering that, going backwards through time instead of using technology to solve something that technology has no place solving, and it can't. Technology is great for streaming video. Technology is great. I'm not against technology. You know, this is technology. That's not a, a wood fire. This phone is technology. These lights are technology. You know, if I cover up the light, Look how bad it looks in here. Well, there's another light over there that's also technology. Here's the, so I'm not just bashing technology, but, but it has no place inside our body. That just can't, it's not, um, our body is not a Ford. Our body is not a Chevy, you know what I mean? We're not a machine like that. And it's a misunderstanding to think, oh, it's like a machine, just get in there and stick some tools in it and pull one out and put another in and then you're good to go. Replace the spark plug and put some gasoline and then go for it. It's not like that. The human body is not a machine. So it's very, very, very complex. And we shouldn't, we, in nature, we don't have to understand the complexity. Originally, we don't have to understand how complicated it is. But the reason we have to understand now is that these companies and organizations are coming out and trying to manipulate information in the name of science. And I studied science. I am a science-minded person. I'm a very logical, experimental type person. I got straight A's in science. I got, I mean, as far as test results, I killed it in science. I love science. But, but, um, they're missing something big here. There's a, there's a manipulation of information going on in the name of science that is just going to trick dumb people. And I mean, so, no offense, but to them, not to you, you're smart for tuning in here, but like, it, it just, 
manipulates ignorant people. Like I was ignorant before, you know, back before I was uh, alkaline, I was just vegetarian. I wasn't vegan. Uh, I tried going gluten free and all that stuff. That that none of that worked. And finally, I understand the science. But you don't need to understand the science for it to work, because in nature we wouldn't have these artificial substances. You wouldn't have a Viagra or something a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago. There was no Tylenol. There was no whatever the chemicals are, and th those are brand names, those aren't chemical names, but whatever chemicals are in there don't exist. They were invented by humans, and that's what is uh, the issue for a lot of people. So, I know that was a long answer, but some of these answers are <laughs> complicated, and I can make them as simple as I can. Does it have anything to do... Okay. So, Corey, are you talking about the skin flaking and dandruff? I think it's partially internal, but also the things that people are using on their skin are artificial. So your skin is an organ. Your skin is your largest organ. And if you're showing something, sign of disease on your skin, it's a sign that something's wrong. Okay? That's what I would say. And then I would typically go about it internally. However, and like I said a minute ago, throw away whatever products are supposedly going to help with that because they're not going to. They're going to say that they are because they're, make, they're marketing, making money. And hemp, or just 100% hemp, isn't as marketed because it's one thing and there's not as much room for someone to make money off of. And, you know, I know that's confusing, but I've been in this business, so I've made supplements. I make my own supplements. And, I, and other stuff like that. And I know how they're just, they've got like 1%, usually other companies, they've got like 1% of hemp oil or something. And then the rest of it is garbage. But the title of the product is hemp something. And I go off on this in my videos because I think that's false advertising. I think that should be illegal because some people are too stupid to check the back of it. And if that was you up until now, no offense, start doing it now. Start, flip it over, read the label. Is there a bunch of stuff in there that you can't even pronounce? Then don't buy it, okay? That's the, it's, I'm trying to make it more simple for you. Don't pay those people that are mixing a bunch of chemicals into your stuff. <laughs> On an ethics level, they don't deserve your money, in my opinion. And on a health level, don't rub that stuff on your skin. So, since you asked, I know I'm getting into preach mode, but uh, that's what happens. <laughs> okay, could someone requested Z83, requested more creamy soup videos. Creamy soup, okay. We are gonna make a cream of mushroom soup. That should make you excited. Um, let's, since I spent so much time in Asia, a lot of the soups I make are more like a brown broth or like a clear stock. And I don't always um, make like a creamy something, but I will, I'm getting more into like the, kind of like soul food is what I've been making. A lot of heavy-ish entrees and a lot of desserts and stuff like that is 
comfort food, actually, is what, I'm, what I've been making. Because, you know, anyone can just eat a raw melon or something alkaline and vegan. You know, you don't need to cook all that. And honestly, w when you're detoxing, you shouldn't really eat cooked food. You should be mostly just uh, fasting or juicing. And then it's the, it's the people that are making this long term that these recipes are for, that are trying to shift over and cut those other ingredients out of their life. That's what the, that's what the meals are supposed to help with. They're not all for detoxing. So I want to make that clear. And you're not detox. I remember someone asked a question a little bit ago and said, how long should you fast? And then how often should you fast? And I answered half their question and didn't answer the rest of it. So I would say you'll feel it. You'll feel when you need to fast. I personally feel like I try to explain it is like I can explain an acid feeling if I'm starting to feel some toxic buildup, which is mostly caused by stress. If you're not taking in artificial stuff anymore, if you've transitioned over, then most of the only toxins are going to come from stress and from pollution and maybe from the, uh, art, you know, water supply, depending on how good the water supply is. So I would every six months, you could do a fast every year. I wouldn't really let it go more than a year to answer your question. If that answers it, let me know below. If, you, if that doesn't clear it up for you, uh, you can refine your question. So it depends on the other stuff you're doing also. Are you stretching? Are you doing the sauna? Are you, you know, are you doing other things to help with your cleanse? And also, are, are you juicing? Are you just having water? So these things all play a role. And I would say most people need to fast longer or detox longer than they probably would. You can do 90 days. You can do 30 to 90 days with no food. It's possible, but you have to, first of all, let people know what you're doing so that there's someone checking in on you. If you have a family doctor, run it by your doctor that you've had your whole life. They know you personally, uh, unless they're no good and then find a better one. Don't just keep them just because you've been seeing them for a long time. If they're not good, find a good one. But, and then, like I said, most people don't fast ever. So you could start with three days. You could start with seven days. You can do 30 days. But like I mentioned, like I keep saying over and over, you're going to need to get the right nutrients and hydration. It's very important. So as long as you're getting new, the right nutrients and hydration, you can go pretty long. You can go like 30 to 90 days, which, you know, that's for if you've got something, if you really need to cleanse, if you've got some serious health issue, then that would be something I would seriously consider. And let's see. Z83 said, if God didn't make it, don't take it. Exactly. Exactly. I can't stress that enough. If God didn't make it, don't take it. Now, for the people that don't believe in God, if nature didn't make it, don't take it. So to me, sometimes I use those words. Sometimes I say nature, sometimes I say God. You know, to me, I mean, I'm not trying to be blasphemous at all, but everything is everything. How can you, you know, really measure? So do you prefer, okay, 
Could you make your alkaline version of eggnog? I do have one. I do have one. I didn't post it because the video was the video was not really that great, but I'll tell you what it what, what it was in it. It was almost just like my spiced pumpkin smoothie, which was not pumpkin, it was squash. There's a recipe for that on my channel. You can check that later after the live. Thank you so much for the thumbs up, by the way. I see somebody gave a thumbs up. I appreciate that. It really helps my channel uh, big time. So the eggnog I made was a little bit of, um, you could use hemp milk or coconut milk. And then I added a couple Brazil nuts that were soaked. So I had soaked Brazil nuts in my fridge already because uh, we make that alkaline Snickers ice cream bar. If you haven't seen my recipe for that, oh, <laughs> it's not really the best for the winter, but mm, I want some right now. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Speaking of, I've got some. I've got a hot drink here to keep me going through the live. So the eggnog was basically a smoothie and I just, I thickened it with soaked Brazil nuts. And then it ended up being pretty thick so I added a lot more um, liquid. So if you want it to be a little thick, I would say one soaked Brazil nut and I just, I have them soaking in my fridge. You can soak them overnight. If you don't want to wait, you don't really need that. That was just to make it a little bit thicker, but it's not necessary. You could just put coconut milk or hemp milk and spice it. You want a little bit of agave, not too much, probably less than a tablespoon. Um, for, you know, if you're just making like one smoothie, I've got one of those smoothie bullet blenders that you can make like one or two small smoothies at once. If you're making a, a large blender full of it, um, that's a little different, but just if you're using like one serving, then you can just put some spices, a little bit of agave, sprinkle of clove, a, a little bit more of a pinch of ginger powder, and a little bit like the same amount clove of cayenne, and, a, and also a pinch of sea salt, and a splash of vanilla. That was the eggnog. If you're just tuning in and didn't know what I was talking about. Okay, and then someone asked, oh, I've got a warm drink right now. It is uh, apple, I basically made hot apple cider. Oh yeah, it's like, it's the cloudy, freshly made apple juice. And you gotta be careful on apples. There's some type of apples that are not recommended. And I know that that's not on the list, but you want to avoid those mass produced apples. Not only do they do stuff to it, like radiate it, spray it with all kinds of stuff that they don't have to list. They don't even have to tell you by law. But the, the Pink Lady, the Gala, and the Fujis are no good. You want to go, you want to get the other apples that are ac actually natural. Just thought I'd add, a, add that in there. So, uh, Zaley asked, do you prefer dry fasting or water fasting? I think water fasting or juicing, which some people say isn't even fasting, is good. As long as you're juicing the correct you know, non-hybrid fruits and or vegetables. That's basically the anti-mucus diet from uh, Arnold Errett, 
a hundred years ago. I've got the book, I've got a couple of his books on my bookshelf. He was talking about this a hundred years ago. You would think it would have caught on by now. <laughs> but it's catching on. <laughs> it's catching on. One video at a time. So to answer your question, I would think water fasting or juicing would be sufficient. Honestly, I don't understand the dry fasting. Why would you deprive yourself of water? That's dangerous to me. I know that especially when I'm fasting or dehydrated, it causes some serious issues for me. That's, that's really the only issue I ever get is if I, I don't really get tired anymore. I just get, I just uh, get dehydrated and need more water. So I'll have to look up, look into dry fasting more if there's something that I'm missing, some kind of benefit. But uh, fundamentally, it seems to go against what I keep recommending, which is stay hydrated and <laughs> make sure to get enough minerals, which you're going to need to take some, take some minerals, which are whole food based minerals, not just uh, artificially made. Does that make sense? I know I give, I gave a lot more info than you necessarily were asking. And I think I'm caught up on all the questions so far. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're almost up to an hour. We've had a lot of good questions coming in. I will keep going as long as I keep getting interaction. And until I get any more questions, I'll just, I'll just wait and <laughs> wait till they come in. I appreciate all the thumbs up. I see them and uh, it helps also my channel because they won't show my videos to people unless they get interaction, which means comments, likes, and shares. But also watch time is one of the big things that they are measuring. So that's why, one of the reasons I'm going live, the other, the, the main reason is that it's better interaction and that uh, I don't have to edit it after. It saves time and gets the info directly to you. Do you have a list of all the alkaline foods? Absolutely, definitely. There's a, I have a Facebook group that is free I have two, actually, two groups, actually. The one of them is called Bioelectric Challenge. There is a list of food in there. And there's a lot of other stuff in there, too. So that's where I used to go live before I figured out how to do it on YouTube. I mean, I used to go live on YouTube two years ago, and then they blocked me from doing it, and they changed all their things around and I honestly didn't know how to go live for the last couple years. So I was going, I was doing this in a Facebook group, but honestly I like the YouTube better. So I'm focusing on YouTube now and, but that group still exists. Once in a while I post, and I, I usually post what I'm eating or any kind of update or, you know, if I'm going live, I put a notification in there for people. So you can check that out. It's called Bioelectric Challenge. You can probably just search it on Facebook. Okay, Corey asked, when taking multiple herbs, is it better to take small doses than taking a bunch at the same time? And when is there supposed to be a certain time frame to take each herb? It depends on the herb. So some herbs, yeah, it depends. What are you, what are you talking about specifically? And, I re, I, and we talked recently, so uh, I remember I told you, I gave you some guidelines. I think that's probably what you're referencing. 
Some of it, if it were me, you, it would matter if you took it in the morning or in the night or where at in your digestion you're taking it. So certain herbs that give you a lot of energy, you wouldn't want to take right before bed necessarily. But then again, um, I have taken them right before bed and most of the herbs that I take, you can take on an empty stomach, but not all of them. There's one specifically, but I don't think you have that, so I don't think that's what you're asking. And I do have some herbs, actually, I'm thinking about doing a giveaway. I've got some small bottles left over, um, so I might do some kind of giveaway. Stay tuned in the next few videos. I can give away I could do it right now, but uh, I'm an hour into the live already. But I have some for cleansing. I've got some for cleansing the colon, which is the next person's question. I've got a special blend that uh, is called that we I named BioClean. Do it. Are you talking about the giveaway? <laughs> I've got, oh man, I have, I've got a lot of herbs. I don't have all the alkaline herbs, but I have <sighs> stockpiled. And I'm a wholesaler as well. So, so I've got, let's see, the herbs for detoxing that I have, they're basically, there's a little bottle of them and you can take it for like, it depends on how you do it. You could just take one capsule a day of those. You could take up to four, but that's, uh, might cause some abdominal discomfort. There are some herbs that have a really powerful effect. It's not really like a laxative though. It's more, um, it's more gentle, it's not harsh. So if you're taking smaller doses, just take an equal amount in the morning and in the evening. And if you're taking, yeah, it, that's a good question, Corey. It's, uh, I'm not, what herbs specifically? Because I, off the top of my head, I can't remember what you have on hand. If you're if you're taking tea, you could probably have it all day. Okay, sea moss you can take several times a day, depending on how low of energy you are. So for me, I usually just take it once in the in the morning ish. I don't really have an exact regiment just I just take them when I see them and usually before 3 p.m. I mean that's just when I tend to take them you can take sea moss on an empty stomach but um, it it if you're fasting it could be good because it, it uh, absorb it expands in your stomach and could help with appetite suppression but sometimes I prefer to eat it with food just because if I just take sea moss by itself, then sometimes I'll just get a boost of energy and forget to eat. <laughs> Which, I mean, that could be great for a lot of people. Just, you know, for me, I have to remember to eat because I... It's easy for me to intermittent fast and just work on something intently without eating, especially if I took sea moss. So if you really need to focus and your stomach is empty, it's sometimes better to focus when your stomach is empty. It just depends, like what you're doing. I mean, ideally, if you have me coaching, then I can help you get your ideal lifestyle. It's gonna be a little different for everyone when you're, you know, getting picky in there, but 
what time of day you eat, what time of day you take the supplements. I would have it revolving around what I'm doing. So if you have an important schedule, like something important that you need to do, I would revolve it around that and just have your routine, have a routine helping you, giving you an edge. Does that answer your question? Bladder rack? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I tend to take those earlier in the day, but if I forget, then I have taken them in the evening before, and it's like, it's not a big deal. But if you're, uh, I think when I was fasting, I took four in the morning and two more in the evening. Or you could take two at breakfast time, two more at lunchtime, two more at dinner time, and you know, see how it goes. But it's not gonna like do anything bad if you take too many or too often unless you really seriously overdo it or unless you have some kind of allergy. But I know that you don't because you've already been taking it. Which herbs helps you get rid of drug addiction? Wow, that's a great question. Um, it depends on... Wow, you know, I have a lot of... Um, I have a lot of personal experience with, you know, people I know and that's an important question actually that I wish people asked more because I think maybe people are thinking about that and not asking it because they, they're afraid to look dumb online or something or they're afraid to uh, talk about drugs and honestly it's something that I want to talk about because it's important and it's, it's happening and it's relevant. So that's something that I have been wanting to talk about but was kind of waiting for someone to ask, I guess. Um, so great question. And man, I'm not going to say that it's easy or anything like that, but I have personal experience quitting alcohol and I know that's one of the more addictive drugs and also one of the more toxic. I have a list actually of the toxicities of different substances, drugs actually, and it's got them listed from non-toxic basically to the most toxic. So what I would encourage, and you know, things like sugar and caffeine and alcohol are drugs and they're bad for you and they're hurting a lot of people. Sugar, caffeine, alcohol are some of the worst drugs out there. Almost as bad or worse than let's just say meth and heroin because that's usually what people consider to be a dangerous drug. People consider meth and heroin to be dangerous. It's because they are, they're toxic. Well, alcohol's up there, right up there, and sugar is right up there. And caffeine is seriously addictive too. So uh, I think a lot of people have a problem that they're not admitting. So don't feel bad admitting it. You know, I know in AA that's the first step. I've never went through AA, however, it was definitely challenging to quit drinking in a strange way that I didn't expect. Uh, and I wasn't really what most people would consider an alcoholic anyway. I barely even, I barely even drank anyway and it was still difficult to quit. So the most challenging part is the social ties and it's I'm almost embarrassed to admit what kind of what I was worried about in the back of my mind was where am I gonna go 
What am I going to do for fun? That's honestly, I think, what was in the back of my head, which I was afraid to really admit. Or, you know, like, <laughs> it's a weird thing, is that I think that's what everyone's probably thinking. That like, oh, I don't want to be left out. Oh, so-and-so went to the bar and invited me. Oh, so-and-so went to a restaurant and invited me. Oh, so-and-so went to a party and invited me. Give it up. That's, that's it. That's all that it takes to give it up. You don't, I mean, honestly, quitting the, it, like, the substance itself wasn't hard to quit at all. It's the people. It's the people and the invites that you need to lay your foot down. Hey, we're going so, somewhere. Nope, I don't drink. That's the, how to quit is how to say no to the people. And then the other step is just don't buy it. And a lot of people try this. I remember, I remember like being, a young, being young and I never smoked cigarettes, but my friends did. And they would try to quit and they would like stop buying cigarettes as one method to try to quit. But then they would end up just bumming them off of other people. Hey, can I bum a cigarette? Hey, can I bum a cigarette? And then that's what they do when they don't buy it for themselves. And it doesn't solve, it might be like a, a it seems like it's going to be a solution, but it really isn't. And it's a good step though, but at some point you need to never buy it again. And the other thing is, don't accept invites from people that do drugs. That's the way I'm going to relate it. If you are, and I know you asked what herbs help with detoxing, but I think that's, my background's in psychology. I think that's more of a psychology question. Quitting, changing your life, changing your habits, um, replacing it maybe with some kind of herbs that make you feel good is going to help keep it that way. But the actually how to quit is you got to stop associating with those people. And that is what a lot of people are unwilling to do. So you got to be willing to dump those bad friends. They might not be bad people deep down, but if they're doing stupid things that is unhealthy, then get away from them. I'm going to not hesitate to tell you that. I know other people have a different feeling about this. No way. I would lay down, put the foot down and say, absolutely not. If I won't hang out with people that drink because it's, I'm thinking in my head the whole time, this person is dumb and dying and it's just going to make, it's not going to be fun. So, you know, there are people that I care about that drink and I distance myself from that. And I only spend time with them in a situation that it's not going to happen. That's what you have to do. And you know what? It's better that way. It's better that way. The, I have no regrets. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. In fact, I think the people that are doing those drugs and drinking are missing out on health. Now, I want to say something since we're on this topic of drugs. Not all drugs are toxic. Illegal and health is not the same thing. It would be nice, wouldn't it? But no, the government is not based on facts or science. Unfortunately, it's the only answer I can come up with is that is corruption. Because we've got things like cigarettes and alcohol, which are legal, but liter literally kill people, causes toxicity, 
And then there's other drugs that are caught, that are lumped in with other illegal drugs, but are not toxic at all. What? Are you kidding me? We'll have to talk about that in another video because, I, you know, especially with young people, why are people doing drugs? Well, they want to feel good or they are bored and they want to feel better. And there's healthy ways to feel better. And there's healthier drugs, if you want to call them drugs, I wouldn't lump them in. I would have the toxic artificial things and the natural non, excuse me, non-toxic things separated. So that it lines up with logic. But, you know, they're not really trying to help you get an understanding. They're just trying to control. And that's, the, that's why, it's, why I said it's corruption and not just protection. In the name of protection, that, oh, they're pretending to help you by making that illegal. That's, that's satanic. That's what Satan does, is that Satan tries to tell you that they love you and they care about you and then they trick you and went before you realize it's too late. That's the danger with the sweet foods and the artificial medicines and everything. It's the easy way out. And who's going to pay the price? Unfortunately, the customer. The consumer is the one that loses that deal. That's what I'm trying to protect you as the consumer because I've been around the back side of the, this industry and I've seen what's going on and I've done business and I've been a customer I've been on both sides and something is very wrong and someone needs to protect the consumer it's supposed to be the Attorney General someone's supposed to protect the consumer from the lying companies that are you know putting toxic things in the food and then saying it's okay Okay, so someone, so, so Z83 said, someone close to me is addicted to meth. I gave them three capsules that had sarsaparilla, guaco, yellow dock, and burdock. And, well, yeah, three capsules, but what's that going to do? I mean, um, if only that was enough. First of all, you're a great friend for caring. You're a great friend for having herbs and offering to that person because that's, you know, you're awesome. <laughs> that person is lucky to have you as a friend. And maybe they don't realize, they probably don't realize that at this point at least. But that person is so lucky to have you around. Um, I, I'm, I know people on meth also. And they're not super close to me because of kind of what I just said, but I also, I did the same. I gave them whole bottles of, of supplements and um, you got to find the person when they're ready, when they're ready to change and when they're looking for something instead. And I know that there's a lot of people either on Adderall or something else out there that are afraid to talk about it. I had a client a year ago who stopped taking their Adderall. I didn't tell them to stop taking it for a legal disclaimer. They didn't even tell me they were on it until after they told me what I'm going to tell you. They stopped taking it after they were following my program for three weeks and they said they felt like they were on Adderall without the negatives by following my program. They just had tons of energy, nonstop energy, like almost like they were high or uh, speeding or I don't know what to call it, but um, 
tweaking, is that, I don't think that's a word anymore, but maybe, is that an 80s or 90s term? So, yeah, speed takes many forms. There's a lot of different speeds out there that people get addicted to. It's highly addictive, so um, there's two parts of that. There's the part about coming to grips with the addiction and putting your foot down. The decision. The, they have to make the decision. You can give them stuff all day long and you know what? They might never open it. I've given people bottles of CMOS that they probably never open the, the protective, you know, childproof thing off of it. And then that's why I stopped giving it away to people. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't help them. You're, you're, like I said, you're a great friend for caring. They told me they, were, they felt like they were high and had a lot of energy from the iron. Yes! And you know what? That's what my whole channel is all about. And that's what my whole program is all about. That's like what my, that one person told me a year ago is that they ran out of Adderall, actually. And what happened is they didn't get it refilled because they felt so cranked from following my program. And I don't even think they were on the iron at that point. So just from the, the alkaline energy, you could, I mean, I would definitely recommend them to re to stock up on those herbs and take them every day and see if they can wean themselves off and that's something they would need to talk to their own doctor about because you know I could get in trouble saying something medical advice so it's not medical advice I'm just I'm just blabbering just Blabbering nonsense that they might want to wean themselves off of that and get on the alkaline herbs. That's definitely what I would do. But, you know, I already did. <laughs> oh, well, no, I wasn't, I wasn't on that stuff to begin with. Also, you know, this is a legal issue, but are you in, depending on what country are you in, are you in a country where cannabis is legal or illegal? Because I've heard a lot of people's stories about how they kicked some dangerous drugs and they switched over to uh, either CBD or some type of cannabis product. Uh, let's see, how do you feel about it? Oh my god. <laughs> Someone finally asked me. Oh no. <laughs> Corey asked me how I feel about the vaccine and consequences if you don't get it. Oh boy. Oh boy. How am I going to say this in a way that I'm not going to get my channel shut down for? Um, you know, even before I say anything, doesn't it, thank you for the thumbs up, by the way, I see some more people did it, I appreciate that. You know, that I even have to, before I even answer this, I'm already, it's already swimming through my head that they're going to try to censor what I'm going to say, even before I answer. That's a shame. That's a shame. And that should tell you a lot. That should tell you a lot about what's going on right now that I feel, as soon as I read that question, I feel nervous about the answer because my answer is going to be true. And they don't like the truth. And when I say they, yeah, I don't want to go into that too deep. Unless that's what you want me to answer. I will if it answers your question. Um, oh, man, well, let's talk about this. What does the word vaccine even mean? Where does that word come from? 
I'm gonna blow your mind already. I can already, okay. Let's go back in time. Most of the media is not gonna know about this. I'm already, disclaimer, disclaimer, it would be very challenging to find other people that would agree with what I'm about to say, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. Just because it's uh, suppressed info. So let's go back 10,000 years or so to ancient Egypt. This is where vaccines started. What is a vaccine? Ooh, it's gross. Oh man, are you sure you even want to know? I'm going to tell you what it is and you're going to want to vom. So, oh man, it's gross. Okay, so here's what they did. This is for smallpox. And you know, I've seen a lot of BS, especially this year. I've seen a lot of BS online, even from doctors and this and that. People who have been to medical school, this is what they teach. They teach in medical school that smallpox is the reason that vaccines are so good. Oh, what about smallpox? Oh no, remember? The vaccine is the only thing that helped it. False. Wrong. Whenever you're seeing a vaccine argument, it always boils down to smallpox. And some know-it-all doctor that just learned, does whatever people say in medical school, just follows whatever their master told them, and they say that that's the proof that vaccines work. They have to go back to smallpox. And here's another thing. Anti-vaxxer. They use that term, anti-vaxxer. This is what the CIA does to humiliate people into not giving, not giving the truth. It's the same thing about conspiracy theorist. And if you might be starting to think that I'm nuts, think about this. Who invented, who made up the word conspiracy theorist? The CIA invented that word. Why? What does that even imply? They made up that word to discredit anyone that leaks information. Whistleblowers. That's what a conspiracy theorist means. It's a, it's a whistleblower that they are smearing. That's part of their, how they smear people. They smear you in every way and that's why this information is not public. Because of the other people that have already come out with this, you know, <sighs> they killed Jesus. I brought that up last video. If you don't think that this happens, go back to that. What happened? And even Arnold Errett mysteriously died from a blunt force to the back of his head. <laughs> he probably would still be alive, even though he would be over 100 years old. Okay, enough conspiracies. Okay, oh, you asked me about the vaccine. It's not my fault. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to what is a vaccine anyway. What is this? The word vaccine is, it goes back to ancient Egypt. What they did, oh, oh this is nasty. It's why I'm avoiding telling you. They take pus out of a sore on a cow and they cut a human and they rub the cow pus into the wound. That's a vaccine. Vaccine means cattle. That's the origin of the word. It's from cattle. And then they took that and they took it and adapted it in other parts of the world, like India, and it went. It started in Egypt. And that is not natural, people. Hello. Also, what even is a cow? I talked about this in a video I didn't put out yet that's being edited. 
there are a lot of natural foods that are not natural. And I think the people in, on my channel already know about this kind of thing, a little bit at least. But cows are not natural animals. When have you ever seen a wild cow? Not gonna happen, folks. A buffalo, on the other hand, that's a real animal, a yak or something like that, that exists in nature. Those weren't crossbred and mutated and everything else. So there's so many layers of artificial here that the, by the time it comes out as a vaccine, I mean, it's not, that's, there's nothing could make me take one, to put it that way. They would have to strap me down forcibly with a gun to my head. And even then, you know, might be time to, time to call it. And uh, there's no, absolutely no way I would let them anywhere near me with a syringe. And in fact, it makes me pretty ticked off thinking about it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely not. No way. You know the kind of, you know the ingredients in there? Find out, start looking it up. It's so disgusting what are in the vaccines. The ingredients of them are so disgusting, it'll traumatize you. And these people that are making it and selling it, like, there are gross things in there that I don't want to be the one to tell you about. Okay, so they gave, you gave them three capsules the morning to help bring them up from a come down. And then you're also trying to help them from relapsing. Wow, well, like I said, you're a great friend. That's the same thing I would probably do is, I mean, sarsaparilla is a good one. And there are some other things I would have them take every day if they want to and are willing to. Also, they should tune into my channel or some similar channel if there are and then start to, you know, get this information like sinking into their head. As so the sooner they can start learning what is energy? What is energy to begin with? A drug like, I'm not exactly sure how meth works, but I know how caffeine works. Caffeine doesn't actually give you energy. It tricks your brain into thinking you're not tired. That's so different. That's so different than actually getting energy. You don't get anything from the caffeine. I'm getting energy from this. It's apple, it's fresh apple juice. <laughs> I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't consume things on camera, I don't know. So, this will give you energy. It has, act it has alkalinity. What does alkalinity have to do with energy? It's electricity. Think about uh, an alkaline battery. You plug in the alkaline into something and it gets electric. Now, that's artificial, but the same concept from consuming natural alkalinity is like a battery, like plugging in. So instead of plugging in, you know, with like an energy drink or meth or Adderall or something or caffeine, it's not going to give you energy. It's just going to make, it's just going to trick your brain and then you're gonna, just going to go back to crashing and now you're going to have more artificial things in your body than before. So you're going to even have less energy. Less energy. So coffee gives you less energy. Sugar gives you less energy. Energy drinks give you less energy in the long term if you understand scientifically how it works. And once you understand it and then you still, if you still do it, the understanding will help you go, oh wow, I actually feel 
like once you understand how bad sugar is and what it does, and then if you eat it after, you'll feel it with the understanding and the physical feeling that will give you what it takes to quit. The awareness, hopefully. I mean, that's my, that's my theory. How can we strengthen baby's immune system naturally so that parents don't run to vaccines? Well, luckily, not all parents run to vaccines. So I won't go into personal details too much, but there's a lot of people out there that don't, and that's the way. It's that you, your answer is the answer. Your question is the answer. How can we strengthen baby's immune system? Don't run to vaccines. That's the answer. The other answers are, while you're pregnant, what are you eating? What are you drinking? I know people that, I know irresponsible people that drank alcohol when they were pregnant. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Isn't that illegal or like, that's criminal to me. What you're doing to your unborn baby, shame on, well, it, I know you're not doing it. I'm just saying hypothetically. It's some, it's terrible. This is ruining the world. This is literally ruining the world. The earth is fine with, without humans. The earth doesn't need people. It's us, not me, not you. It's other people that are ruining the world with the next generation of feeding them toxic food, feeding them toxic pills, not teaching them anything, and then sending them out in the world to be morons and to ruin. Those are the people that are going to mess the world up. Those are the people that are going to throw plastic on the floor. Those are the people that are going to break the law. You know, I'm not one for just obeying. I think I made that clear in all my videos. But most laws are common sense just to help humanity. Not the overreaching corrupt laws. I'm talking about common sense laws. But even these people, these bad, unhealthy people, what makes someone bad or good? To me, their health. You know, because even if you're a good, good person, even if you're nice, if you're unhealthy and toxic, what are you going to get done? You know, I used to be, when, back when I was sick, I wasn't, I wasn't really a good person during that. I was sick. So I think a lot of these people are sick. And what, a lot of what we see in the world is sickness. It's evidence of sickness. And what causes the sickness? Well, what I've been saying is the artificial substances. It's not all food, but I mean, a lot of it's food. It's not all food. There's a lot of other artificial stuff going on, right? Talking about Wi-Fi. That's, a, that's radiation. There's no way that's good for you. No way. They can say all day long that it's safe and it isn't. It's fundamentally toxic. So we've got the Wi-Fi, we've got artificial food, we've got pollution from cars, there's plastic, whatever. You know, this is a natural shirt, but most people, most of the clothing out there is made out of toxic chemicals and then you're rubbing it all over your skin all day. Not me. Not if I can help it. So they're coming at you in all directions. Through your skin, through what you drink, through the food, through the, what you breathe. And we have to take control of our health and go backwards through time, basically, to what we, our health would have been like thousands of years ago, before the toxins, before the corn syrup and all the other stuff. 
yeah, we can't escape all stress. We can't escape all toxins, unfortunately, but we can start cutting out everything that we can until, you know, I'm still raising the bar on myself and I'm still cutting certain things out that, you know, better water, better clothing, stuff like that. So there's always another level and the up the level usually means going backwards in technology, not forwards. As far as physical health, I'm talking. The, and I ranted about this a little bit earlier, that technology is great and all for, you know, YouTube or the technology, the heat, and ooh, I'm roasty. So certain technology is good, but not all of it. So we need to take the good technology and put it into use. But technology to create your food isn't a good use of technology. Okay, good. More questions are coming in. If a person does fruits, melons, berries, juicing, smoothies, water, tea, if extremely sick and weak, will it help some and some tender leafy greens and sea moss? Yeah, that would help. Depends on what tender leafy greens you're talking about though. I have a video that I recorded and didn't put out yet about natural foods that aren't really natural. Well, spoiler alert, one of those is spinach. Spinach is not natural. So that kind of answers your question, is that yes, in general, you said, you know, fruits, melon, berries. You said, oh no, <laughs> have you been eating nonstop spinach? Well, now you know. I mean, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but then again, I'm glad to be the one to tell you because maybe no one would have ever told you. So, yeah, I know it's always annoying when you find out something you've been eating is uh, hybrid and artificial. But, you know, it's not about opinion. It's about science. pH doesn't lie. Pineapple is acid also. Sorry to break your, sorry to burst your bubble. <sighs> okay, here, and I, I'm not directing this at you. I'm gonna do a small rant for a second about vitamin C. Smack my head. Vitamin C is a bunch of nonsense. And this is exactly the, this is what makes me <laughs> frustrated about it is that you're out there, you know, Lish, Lish, am I pronounced, I, uh, thank you for tuning back in. I remember you from last live. So, um, you, you're, it's not your fault, but you've been tricked by thinking vitamin C is important. And now you, you're eating pineapple, which is highly acid and caustic and corrosive. So that's the, tr that's the trouble with vitamin C and all that. I have, a, I have a video in my program about how vitamins are BS. And I know we could get deep into that and I know some people are gonna say, what do you mean vitamins are BS? Of course vitamins are real. Well, not really. Not in the way that it matters. Why do you need to know vitamin C? It's just tricking you into buying an acid pineapple that someone's making money off of. So what is it, what is, when does the vitamin C play a part? Doesn't matter. Does a, does a pepper, like a bell pepper, have a label? that it's high in vitamin C? No, it just grows on the plant and you pick it and eat it, the end. It's only because we're living in an artificial world with all this nonsense that they're using science to take advantage of you. 
They're using science against you with stuff like vitamin C. Because that's not really vitamin C. How could an apple is acid, or a pineapple is acid, and a melon is alkaline? They both supposedly have vitamin C. Well, choose the alkaline one that is not man-made hybrid. I know that, that I know that it's pretty confusing and obnoxious. That's why I have a program and that's why I do these videos. Okay, so what fruits should I get and leafy greens? The body's not absorbing nutrients. The reason your body's not absorbing nutrients is because you ate pineapple and such and such. That's blocking the body. That's what, that's what makes the pH important. pH meaning alkaline acid. And just to back up for people that might not understand. And, you know, who, who does understand? This is really complicated, and you usually wouldn't need to know this in nature. Above 7 pH is alkaline. 7 and below, below 7 is acid. So, I know that really doesn't answer anything. It's just more jargon. So, oh, I'm sorry, Lish, Lish, that you're going through this realization right now that what you're eating has uh, what you're eating is what's causing it. What is this? Is this are my notifications coming up? Sorry, I got a notification and I'm distracted. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, so you're coming to the realization that you've been lied to about everything. Ah, I know, it's an uh, unfortunate step in this process. Some people that I'm working directly with have already met, had this realization that everything has been a lie for the most part, but not all people have had this realization yet. And for some people, I'm the one helping you come to that realization. And it's not that I want this, it's not that I want that to be true. It's just the way the world is. So it's unfortunate, but that's why I'm trying to help you. Because, I mean, we got to stick together or it's, we're just going to be bogged down with misinformation from companies that don't care about our health at all. Well, that's, you know, my response to you realizing that you're eating acid foods is that this is why people recommend fasting. This is why fasting is good because you don't eat anything because then there's nothing to confuse it with. If you're juicing still and you don't have the right list, by the way, I have a list of free, uh, in my free group. So there's a Facebook group called Bioelectric Challenge. I've got the list of fruits and vegetables that are not hybrid in, the, in that group. So you can get that info pretty easily. And there's more information in there as well, uh, in addition to that. Would really like to see my video of my version of a of an iron tonic. What do you mean by iron tonic? Is that a, a bubbly drink? Or like um, a tincture or like a, a tea, a strong tea. What exactly are you referring to as a tonic? Because maybe I already make some. I do make my own root beer, if that's similar to what you're thinking. But it's really, really simple and easy. It's, it's too easy to even make it into a video. All I do... Well, do you, wanna, do you want my root beer recipe? Is that what you mean as a tonic? 
like a like an energy drink, but an actual energy drink, not one, not a toxic energy drink that's gonna just leech your energy from you and prevent you from absorbing nutrients like Red Bull and all those. Yeah, I called them out by name. I used to drink that kind of stuff in my early 20s before I figured it out. Oh, so like an iron... Okay, so a liquid iron. Well, that's great because in a bottle. Oh, okay. So I would make something out of, I have some mushrooms that I take and also, right, yeah, he had some iron plus in a bottle. Um, I don't take anything exactly like that, but I do take those herbs that are in that. I think the ones that are in that, if I'm not mistaken, are like Irish moss, chaparral, which I probably am pronouncing wrong. Um, I do have a, a, a supplement that I created similar to that, that has a bunch of high powered iron in it. I'm trying to think of what was in it off the top of my head, because it's been a while since I formulated that. I want to say CMOS, Bladderac, Chaparral, maybe sarsaparilla and burdock root valerian root that's probably what i would put in it but uh <clears throat> but i will copyright that so that no one can steal it <laughs> yeah no, and i ha i do have some proprietary blends that I've created. So I won't give away exactly what it is, but <laughs> something like that. You can make a strong tea. Sarsaparilla is just fantastic. Probably my favorite. Does that answer your question? Liquid iron? Almost everything I take has iron. Um, you could even, there's some kinds of mushrooms that I've been foraging that you can boil down and you can make like a, uh, I guess it's like a Eastern medicine where it's a, like a, it's not really tea. You could call it tea. Lish asked, is grapefruit or grapefruit juice okay? No. <laughs> Sorry. I feel, I feel bad. Uh, find my Facebook group and get the list. It's called Bioelectric Challenge. And there's a link to it on this channel somewhere. And also, you could probably just search Facebook for it. Oh yeah, make something up and I'll buy it. You don't have to list my ingredients. Well, I used to sell stuff like that, but um, I took a hiatus from it until further notice because of some issues that, yeah, unfortunately, you could reach out to me if you want and um, I do have a program, there's a link in the description and there's a way to get a, cons a free consultation with me and I could talk to you directly. But, and then I could, I could potentially send you some stuff, but I would just do that with, you know, like one or two people. I'm not gonna, I have a whole online store that I took down for the moment. So I need some other stuff before I, you know, go big with that. Unfortunately, it's just something that I need to be better prepared for. It's the, because of the industry and there's just some business things that are boring. You don't need to know about it. As soon as I can though, I will definitely provide, if I am able to provide you with the goods 
Um, I will. I would love to. That would be nothing would make me happier than to sell that kind of stuff because you know I would feel really good about it as from an ethical point. Just make sure it's high in iron. Yes, you'll be getting high on iron. <laughs> you'll be getting high on iron. I should make that my catchphrase. Maybe that's what can get people to pay attention to this. Because actually, I know that a lot of people are on drugs and all they want is to feel better. I mean, every, all, everyone wants the same things. People just want to feel good and be happy. They want to have fun and be left alone for the most part. I mean, like most people are naturally good people. The reason people are bad, in my new found opinion, is that they're toxic from the inside out. Try being constipated for decades. Try being chronically ill and, and nice to people at the same time. It's hard. It's hard to be nice to people when you're sick. I've been there. You know, a lot of people on my channel think I'm so positive and I'm so calm. Well, not really. <laughs> I'm just like anyone else. I get angry and frustrated just like you. Actually, I might get more angry and frustrated than other people because I have more energy. So that could be a double-edged sword of having a lot of energy, is that you have a lot of energy when you're in a good mood, but then what if you're in a bad mood? Watch out. No one can, <laughs> no one can stop me. So unfortunately, the world is full of a lot of sick people. And unfortunately, some of them are in really high places where they're making bad decisions, in my opinion, that a, a healthy person wouldn't make. Healthy person wouldn't make some of these decisions in the government or in the policy or whatever it may be in these businesses or what have you. Just imagine if everyone in the world was healthy what would the world be like? Oh, my light just died. Oh well. Okay, you sent in a request and I have to, you, you requested to join the group? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, yes, you have to request and there are questions in there. Uh, make sure you answer the questions if you do join my group because I don't, I uh, punt people out of it that don't answer. <laughs> I'm a stickler for stuff like that just because I mean if you can't follow a simple thing a simple instruction that I don't want you in my group you're just going to be a, just going to cause me pain <laughs> no but there are some really great people in the group and uh, I'll see you in there when I get off when I'm off of the live you know usually once a day I go through and I approve all the new people so if you do join that group and don't get approved immediately, you will get approved within 24 hours, as long as you answered the questions. And then I'll see you in there. You can ask your questions there too, if you don't catch me live here. But yeah, my one light just died, but I guess it's still a decent, decent uh, shot. So I'll keep answering questions if you have any, otherwise I will get going. But I'll take a sip. I've still got some of this left. Ah. And thank you all so much for tuning in and, and staying tuned in for so long. I appreciate the 10 thumbs ups. Uh, and if you haven't, keep those coming in so that people later know that we had a good stream going and so that YouTube shows my videos. Almost all my viewers are subscribed. So new people don't see my videos really. That's why it would be nice 
uh, to share in a relevant spot and like and comment because then YouTube will actually get around to showing my video <laughs> to more people. That tricky algorithm. I've been on YouTube for five years. Most people didn't discover me until like a month ago because I started posting videos nonstop. I was doing videos every single day. I even did a few days of multiple videos a day. And I'm trying to get, I, I should be doing about five videos a week. So I would, I do want to do every single day, but I've got to cut some slack because it's, uh, if I'm filming and editing, I can't film and edit at the same time. So once in a while I need a day off of the editing so I can film more. So if, if I do miss a day, I'll be back soon. I'm, but I'm doing like, I, I've been doing seven videos a week. So from now on, I'm going to try to do five a week. That way it gives myself a two day grace period if I need to. And someone just asked a question. Where did it go? Is prickly pear dragon fruit? No. Prickly pear is cactus. It's also called... Um, oh, I almost was showing off my vocab vocabulary knowledge and then I forgot. Um, nopal. Nopal cactus. Nopal. Nopal. It's a kind of cactus. You can eat the fruit and you can eat the... I don't know what to call that on a cactus. Um, there were some growing near my house in Korea, actually. But if you get the, the prickly pear fruit, it has a million different seeds in it. And you have to pick the seeds out. They're super hard. The seeds are like little rocks. And, but if you get just like the cactus, I don't know what to call it, the body or the, then you, you um, scrape the spines off of it and you can grill those. You can grill them flat, flip them, grill them again, and then you can cut them into strips and then grill the strips. So there are some people eat those on tacos. Mmm. My sister manages a few restaurants in New York City and they have nopal, nopal tacos. I think she loves them. Can you create raw alkaline vegan meals? Well, the raw alkaline meals, I feel like I don't really need to create because it's just raw. You don't really need to do anything. So what do you need, uh, you know, like if something's raw, it doesn't really need a recipe. I feel I just eat it. Usually my go-to is a cantaloupe. Just cut it in half. I don't even cut them up anymore. I just scoop the seeds out and, and eat it like it's a bowl. Boom, done. I'm pretty quick and easy as far, I mean, I know some of the recipes take are a little in depth. But day to day, I try to keep it really very, very simple. Juicing is a good way if you don't know what to eat. Just make it, just make some uh, fresh juice. And again, there's a list of food. You said you already joined, so I'll approve you for that group and then you'll know exactly uh, which ones are good to juice. And by the way, Lish, while you're detoxing, don't eat any fats. Because there are some fats permitted on, the, on my program, but not while you're detoxing. Except hemp, hemp milk or hemp seeds. Those would be okay. That's it, though. No other fats during the detox period. And that's, you know, you mentioned that you want to clean, clean it out as quick as possible. That's the way to do it. Um... I do have alkaline vegan meals. I have an entire program, and if you're working directly with me, 
I can make your meal plan specifically for you, but that's usually something that I reserve for my one-on-one -on -one clients because, you know, that just takes time and could you continue can, could you continue your holiday recipes through Christmas, please? Absolutely, I will, of course. I've got a menu. Did you see my playlist? I made a new playlist with just the holiday meals. And there are a few I'm considering for Christmas. But what do you want? What do you want to eat for Christmas? Because, you know, what, what do most people eat? Ham? Ugh. <laughs> So let me know what you, what you want for Christmas, ideally. Do, don't even, forget about alkaline, just, just try to think what you want for Christmas and then I'll try to make something alkaline. I'm still thinking about it. I've, I have a couple ideas about what I'm gonna make for Christmas, but I, I'm gonna do an extravaganza. I'm gonna really go for it like I did for Thanksgiving. And Ooh, alkaline Mexican food. <laughs> have you seen my have you seen my video about alkaline Mexican food? And, or just don't stop ever. That's pretty much what I'm thinking. Uh, what else do I have to do anyway? What could be more important than this? Nothing that I can come up with. Okay, yeah, my okay. Um, thank you for commenting. They're rolling in now. Uh, alkaline Mexican food. Yeah, I have, there's a video we made refried beans, Mexican rice. <laughs> we, so we made like a fake beans, fake rice. We made burritos. We made guac. Uh, we made salsa. I think that, yeah, I think that was it. And that was pretty much on, that was pretty much champ, champurado. I don't even know what that is. That's a new word for me. I'm not very uh, well versed in Spanish or tamales. Ooh, ooh, I want it. So tamales are wrapped in corn flour, right? And then a, a husk, and then are they boiled or fried? I think I've had one, and usually they're just meat inside, right? It's kind of like cornbread, like a, like, a, like a stuffed cornbread kind of deal. Forgive me if that's uh, blasphemy. <laughs> I do love Mexican food and respect, totally respect it. And I've studied, I've studied it to some length, even though I don't know what champurado means. But I have, um, I don't necessarily know the words. You can wrap tamales in banana leaves. Ooh, interesting. You can, okay, so banana, I have an important announcement coming up soon. Maybe I'll announce it right now. Oh my God. I'm so excited about something I've been planning. I think I'll announce it in the next one, but I have a huge announcement. I have two announcements, actually. I have two announcements that are gonna affect the channel. And uh, I'll tell you soon, I'll tell you soon. It has to do with something you just mentioned. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, I mean, hey, any ideas you have for Mexican food, Ask and be specific and I'll try to figure it out because I love Mexican food so far what I've had. I've never been to Mexico, so there's that. But I have been to Chicago <laughs> and they have a large Mexican population. And man, I had some f amazing Mexican food in Chicago. Also, like I said, my sister's a uh, general manager of uh, Mexican restaurants. So I do have some of her secret recipes. Champurado is a warm drink, perfect for the holiday. Oh, really? Okay, awesome. I learned something new. 
Sometimes I think I'm learning more in these than you are. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll check that out. Interesting. Very interesting. I know that there is a, a Mexican drink that's made from tamarind. And I have a tamarind, I have tamarind puree, and I've been wanting to make that drink, but I haven't had the original version, I don't think. I might have once, but um, at first tamarind sounded really gross to me, like, ooh, what is that? But wow, it's so good. It's so tasty, it's just sour. It's just a clean, sour flavor. It's, it looks like it's going to be a lot more weird tasting than it is. So I could make, I could make like a soda, like a, like a pop. I, they call it pop in the Midwest, but uh, they call it soda. I don't know where everyone's from. Apparently some of you are from Mexico, or at least know what's going on there. Um... You make, oh, you make your own alkaline champurado. Okay, awesome. Tastes just like it. Great. Lish said, no avocado and nuts or dates. Yes, dates. Yes, dates. Just no avocado just during the detox. After that, avocado is fantastic and nuts, depending on what nuts. Obviously, um, walnuts are good, Brazil nuts are good, no, and, and that's it. Sesame seeds are okay only when they're raw, and hemp seeds raw as well. So just, yeah, avocados and nuts are good, but just not at the, at the beginning when you're going hard for that detox. You mentioned that you were, um, that you were sick and, and it's pretty bad, I think, from your earlier comment. Okay. Let's see. Detox and greens and salad. I'm not a huge salad fan. Honestly, just never got into it. If I do make salad, I like, I like raw sea moss on the top. You don't even need that much. Like, two tablespoons, like, I mean, just a little, like a, just a little clump of it. That will give you superpowers all day. That will, a, a sea moss salad with avocado. Yeah, I would put avocado, but like that wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that during uh, fasting. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm talking about Jamaica. What? When was I talking about Jamaica? I don't know. But I, I will talk about Jamaica. I want, I've always wanted to go and haven't. Uh, it's on my list of places to go, that's for sure. Maybe someday soon. Uh, yeah, I would love to go. Are you, is, are you from Jamaica? I noticed that some people from Jamaica do watch my channel. I can see in my analytics that I have some Jamaican viewers, so cool. I would love to meet you and come to the, to the beach. I belong at the beach. I don't belong in this cold. I'm, uh, Zaley asked where I live. I live in the Midwest, in the US. I won't be too specific because, uh, <laughs> I do get haters, believe it or not. I just block them too fast for you guys to notice. But yeah, I would, I would tell you exactly where I live if I trusted the internet <laughs> at all. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about you specifically. I'm just the other people asking. Uh, you never know. I mean... That's one of the weird things in my life, that uh, I never expect there to be negative people, but they come out of the woodwork once in a while. I've been pretty steer and pretty clear. You could make alkaline birria. B 
Listeria. Mm, what is that? Oh yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this because I'm learning things now. <laughs> now the Q&A is reversed and I'm asking you. But yeah, if you want to know, if you have ideas for Christmas other than Mexican food, I, I got that. Um, yeah, let me know and I'll do my best in as far and as in advance as you can because it does take me some time to figure some of these recipes out. Um, certain things I can just instantly throw it together and nail it and other things I spend like weeks researching. It's fun actually to make something alkaline that isn't. Um, that's great. And uh, I have owned my own restaurant in the past and I really don't want to do that again, but I have thought about doing an underground kitchen or underground restaurant where you would come eat at my house and like a private thing, but I just have to, you know, find the way to market that cuz yeah. And see if the people in my area would be into it or not. So let me look up Zeria really quick because I'm curious what that even is. Wait, is that, did I say it wrong? Because now I can't even find it. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> A lot of comments coming in. Good. Where is this comment? Someone. Oh, Biri, Biria with two R's. Biria. Is that how to pronounce that? I don't even know. It's amazing that I actually speak more than one language, but. I can't speak Spanish yet. Birria. Oh, birria. Oh, I've been seeing these. Are these the tacos that you dip? I've been seeing these all over the internet. These are huge right now. Yeah. With consomme, is that what you do? Dunk them in? That sounds fantastic. I don't know how Christmassy it is, but. I would do it for sure. Okay, someone said, uh, Lish said, can I have bananas and mango? Um, mango, yes. Bananas wouldn't be bad, but you want to make sure they're the mini bananas, the baby bananas, or burro bananas, which are usually called Thai bananas, depending on where you live or where you're getting them. They have them at the Asian market sometimes. Um, it's been kind of hard for me to find the mini bananas these day, this year. It's been on and off. I did find some at the Asian market actually. Oh, you're in Miami? Oh man, jealous. <laughs> you should be able to get whatever in Miami, I would think. Yeah, that's a good spot. You could even grow your own bananas in Miami. Lucky you. Oh, you can't find mini bananas anywhere. Yeah, it's been hard recently. Um, there was a few places that used to have them, like right next door to me used to have them. They, and then they stopped since the you know what happened. So, hmm. But I did find some at the Asian market last time I went. And the time before that, they didn't have any Thai bananas or mini bananas. And I went last time and I got both. So I got Thai bananas and I got mini bananas. Right now I'm stocked up. But, you know, that's just something. When I see mini bananas, I buy usually all of them. <laughs> because you can freeze them. When they turn brown, actually that's when you should eat them, if you didn't know. When they start turning black is when they're ripe. And they're not ripe until they're turning black. But 
So when they start turning too black and you're like, ugh, put them in the freezer. This is the trick. This is a trick. And I saw some, um, some Michelin master chef talking about this. And uh, I was like, I knew it. So that's something good, that uh, something good I knew. That the, it, the frozen ripe bananas, mm, <laughs> they're so much sweeter. They're so good. And you can use them for ice cubes too. You can pull them out. Uh, all you do, run them under hot water for a second, peel them so easily, and you can use them like the mini banana. You can just use it like an ice cube in your smoothie. Then you don't even need ice. I know that's not what we're talking about, but start talking about mini bananas and mangoes are really good, yes. So if you're detoxing, but if you're juicing, I don't think bananas would juice. So you probably would not really have any bananas if you're doing a hardcore like detox with just juicing. Um, Prunes are okay, however, you're going to have to find a brand that doesn't have any additives in it. So, because I know that people like to slip things in there, like, um, what's the one that I always see? Some kind of sodium something, sulfate or something in the dried fruit. Just make sure it doesn't have any of that and you're good to go. Make birria tacos, please. Oh, I want some so bad. The problem with tacos, though, is the tortilla. I have not... I have made spelt tortillas, but... They were just... They were just okay. I'm not, like, excited about making them again. So... I would have to figure out the tortilla. I, I, I need some work on that one, honestly. Because, you know, tacos are so good. If I botch the tortillas, no one will forgive me. <laughs> the tortilla is really all you need with the taco. All the rest of the stuff I've already met, made. I've already made fake refried beans, fake Mexican rice. I can make an awesome salsa. Oh, man, I can make a great... Um, guac, guacamole, and my sister's old restaurant used to make a habanero salsa that was to die for. <laughs> oh man, and it's, I'm gonna make that. That is a, that was a, a famous um, restaurant in Manhattan. They closed down a few years ago and I know the recipe to the habanero salsa. So I'm, I'm going to be coming out with that soon. I finally got an immersion blender. So that's what, that's what, what I needed. That's the trick to making that salsa. Okay, we've got a lot more comments. Let's see. Alkaline enchiladas. I pretty much did make similar to enchiladas. I've got a recipe on the channel already with burritos. And, I mean, you could... All, all it would need to be to be an enchilada was just less filling. So we had maybe two or three burritos and put some sauce on them and put some guac and rice, I think, on the side. Oh, oh no, you're driving me crazy now. I'm so hungry. <laughs> now, this is my, you know how to get my attention is with Mexican food and my third eye is poking out. <laughs> oh, Mexican food has a special place in my heart. This is what I want. Oh yeah. But I do, we do already have a video of uh, how to make m a lot of those Mexican inspired alkaline staple foods. So well, definitely an enchilada would be just a little bit more tightly rolled up. The problem with the tortillas that I made the burritos from is that they're so expensive. I mean, they're like a dollar per tortilla, it's, which is crazy. It's like $7 for seven of them. 
or something like that. I mean, so it's good every once in a while if you, you know, it had been two years since I had a burrito or a wrap. So in that case, it's worth it, definitely. But to eat them every day or every week, eh, it's just kind of... Um, but I will, I will definitely try to figure out the birria tacos, and I'll take another shot at the hard shell tortilla. Maybe I could, maybe making a hard tortilla would be better. I do have a hummus video. I just saw Z83 comment alkaline falafel and hummus. Definitely, I have a hummus video already, and my hummus is pretty darn good. I mean, it's way better than that junk at the store. You know that I'm going to call it garbage, is what I've been calling everything. <laughs> if I didn't make it, it's garbage. <laughs> no, I'm, no, it's not that bad. Um, alkaline enchiladas, mmm. Yeah, that sounds very similar to what we made already. So definitely check that video out and see if it hits your, if it satisfies your Mexican craving. And if it doesn't, then give me some more tips on maybe how you would have liked the meal. Um, let's see. Frozen fruit is just as good as fresh. If it's organic, yes. Frozen fruit is supposedly, has all the nutrients still in it. So especially if your fruit's going bad, stick it in the freezer and, and keep it from going bad. So that's usually if, yeah, berries, like if you, if they're on sale and there's just tons of berries for cheap, I just load them up and it makes excellent ice cream. Or you can even get frozen berries out of your freezer and use them as ice cubes. And uh, cause sometimes I make, like I mentioned, I make root beer and if I, for some reason, if I didn't chill the sparkling spring water, I'll just put some frozen raspberries or something in it instead of ice cubes. And it's a good use of the frozen berries. Also, I mean, the smoothies, throw some frozen fruit, boom. Now, I wouldn't recommend drinking or eating cold food all the time, especially if you're detoxing or something. It's not good for your stomach to eat the cold foods, but you know, if you've been doing this for two years and you feel like having some ice cream or something, go for it. Cause it's way better to eat something that you made out of good ingredients, even if it's frozen, you know, just drink some tea after and uh, it won't be so bad. Do you have to buy organic? You don't have to, but if you would like eating pesticides, just question that. Would you like to eat the pesticides? And then just imagine someone wiped something onto your food. Ew, wouldn't you want to wash it off? Well, whatever they're, wa whatever they're spraying on your food is way grosser than what you would imagine them wiping on your food. Does that make sense? The chemicals, like whatever they're putting on there, is to make them money. It's not for you to be healthy. So if it's going to kill bugs, then what's it going to do to you? That's worth considering. And you know, I don't always buy organic, but if there's a choice I do, I almost always do. Because I want, it's just, if I eat something with toxins on, the outside of it. It's just, I'm just going to have to detox it later. So you can't really get out, you know, like, you can't really get out of it. You can't really insert technology and, and chemicals into something and somehow have it be healthy too. That's just, so we're always going back towards nature, backwards, as far as our internal health is concerned. And anything new under the sun is not for human consumption. Alkaline falafel and hummus. Um, I don't have a falafel video yet, but I do have a hummus video that I stand by. 
Definitely a good one. Tahini, mmm. Tahini is something that is, uh, has a weird taste, but if you make stuff out of it, it's like, it's so good and it tastes such good quality. And if you don't know what tahini is, it's just raw sesame seeds. And in Asia, they eat sesame leaves, and it's so good. One of the best things. I'm going to grow some next year. I hope to. Okay, let's see. Well, I'm eating fruits and making smoothies and drinking juice. Good. Trying to get tea. Okay. Yeah, sounds like you're getting there. Keep up the good work. You know, probably no one else is going to compliment you on that, but how are you feeling? Is it feeling better? If you're doing it correctly, you should start noticing the results pretty quickly. And I know you mentioned you were accidentally having pineapple. Just, you know, I, so you're, you need to figure those little things out. And I know that's so difficult at the beginning. That's why I'm here. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. I, I wouldn't be doing this if it was popular information. Okay, so falafel is good. Falafel from the store usually has wheat, and falafel from the restaurant usually has fava beans. Um, before I was, right when I was getting, going alkaline, I was working, I was helping a restaurant do their marketing, and he was a um, Lebanese food, which, you know, a lot of hummus and good stuff like that. Falafel, mmm, it was so good. And he, his, he specialized in sauces, but he, you know, he used sugar and corn syrup and, and other stuff like that that I would never use. But uh, I have some good ideas. And actually, my sauces are well, it, amazing and it's I don't always film and also I used to make a lot of pizza and stuff like that I haven't done that in a long time because um, my kitchen is a little smaller than I <laughs> am comfortable but I love this I love my place though so that's why I, I'm, I'm here another year unfortunately even though the kitchen is small Mexican agua chiles. Let me see what that. I'll leave it up to you to make a shrimp alternative. Shrimp of the woods. There's a type of mushroom that looks like shrimp, but actually it tastes more like liver. It doesn't really taste like shrimp. But I bet I bet some type of mushroom could be a shrimp alternative. Agua. Agua chiles? Doesn't that mean water chili or something? That's like the only word I know is agua. <laughs> chile. Ag agua chiles recipe. What is that? Oh, it's just shrimp. Yeah, huh. It's a big pile of shrimp with um, different types of different types of chiles than we're used to. There is something, now cilantro used to be on Dr. Sebi's list, and now it isn't. So some people are still eating that because the new list came out and he wasn't alive anyway. But there's also something called culantro that is, has a similar taste to, of cilantro, but is not the same plant, actually. And the culantro is the more uh, the ancient one that has definitely not been tampered with, but I don't know if that exists around here. It kind of looks familiar, so I'm going to check it out um, next time I'm at my dad's farm. Just I'll just look around, because you know that amaranth, burdock, nettle, and a lot of other stuff just grows wild, and people mow it down. It's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna have to get going because I have an hour massage coming up. <laughs>
I feel guilty. I feel guilty that I'm getting it and you're not. Sorry about that. But that's my, I have to take care of myself and you know, I've been hunching over the computer. Um, so I have to <laughs> go get a massage or I'll start to go crazy. I used to go to the sauna every day before they closed it down. And it's a shame that they did because, oh man, I'm upset. Especially their reasoning is not scientifically backed whatsoever. And people are still allowed to go to the gym just not to go in the sauna. Give me a break. And then the, I went to the store earlier and there was people everywhere. So I, I went to go buy a new knife and there's people all over the place. But no, you're not allowed to go to church or whatever. Like, that's seriously sick. That's seriously satanic and messed up. So I'm bringing the church to you. This is my church. This has been my sermon. And I appreciate your questions and I appreciate you asking. I appreciate you tuning in. And if you're seeing this in a replay, ask more questions and, and let me know what's going on. Yes, I'm thankful to see your comments. And the one reason I like the, these lives is because then I can kind of, I can rant a little bit and kind of test the water what you're thinking and not. Because some of these more controversial topics I don't have videos about. I'd rather do it live just because I can, you know, there's a back and forth going on. Uh, someone said, Doug, don't go. Oh, that's so nice. That's so flattering that you, that you want me to stay going live. That's, I, I appreciate, that makes me smile so much that my cheeks are sore. Oh, you know, in life, there's, this, there's a very interesting dynamic where people don't appreciate this information. And I was frustrated for a long time until I could finally start, figured out how to go live. You know, my mission is to give as much information as I can. That's what makes me feel like I can sleep at night, like, oh, like I did it. I did the right thing. I feel 100% sure that this is the right thing for me to do. But, you know, on the, in the internet, I can help to reach the right people. But in everyday life, most people don't want to hear stuff like this. So I am so happy and flattered that you're um, grateful and that it, it makes me know, like I'm, I'm not doing it just for my own ego trip. However, it makes, me, it makes my ego feel great that you are tuning in. But um, it helps me know that you understand the value of the info. And that really makes, makes it worth it. And to be able to tell people that actually need this and care about it and want it, that's what makes me do what I do. So this has been just all for you and it doesn't really help me other than uh, it's nice. It's kind of, it's nice to socialize even under lockdown and everything. So it's nice for me to speak the truth and have you actually, uh, have you actually appreciate it. it? Let's me know I'm in the right place doing the right thing. 
And to me, that means a lot. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zaley, for commenting. Thank you, Z83, and whoever number one is. Thank you, Leash, or Lish. I keep, I keep calling you both, just in case. And Corey, and everyone else that tuned in and asked questions. Some people didn't have a name, their real name, and that's okay. Um, we had some people with a difficult to pronounce name. Thank you so much, Carrie and Fala from earlier. So if, if I got to see you in the live, if you're tuning in in the replay, I appreciate you sticking around to the end. Make sure you ask your questions. I'll be going live again some, at some point next week. I'll probably announce it. I'll probably just do it around this same time, but I'll put, uh, just in case, I'll announce it in my groups. So until then, have an amazing day on purpose. And everything we talk about in these videos and on this channel is how to actually do it. We're not just here to listen to me talk. We're not just here to waste time. We're here to get results. We're here to get more energy. So did I share my root beer recipe? No, it's basically sarsaparilla tea and agave and sparkling water. Boom, there you go. So you just gotta make the sarsaparilla tea. You know, it all comes down to the brand or like the quality of the sarsaparilla because I've had different types of sarsaparilla. The, one, the stuff I have now is fantastic. I think it was from India and it tastes really, really good and it tastes just like root beer. So I make a strong sarsaparilla tea, then like uh, usually I, I make a cup of tea, I drink the tea, and then when there's a little bit left, and it, when it's super strong at the bottom, then I make that into the root beer. And I just use like, yeah, like an inch of the bottom of the tea, the strongest part, and then... Um, agave and I use in the size cup I have I put well it's a different cup I put six small squirts of agave and I could measure it out for you it's probably like one tablespoon two tablespoons I don't know how, what it is and then you mix it up before adding the sparkling water or you'll you'll flatten the sparkling water so just make a super sweet you're basically making a super sweet root beer syrup and then you pour the sparkling spring water in and just up to level and then taste it to where the sweetness, you don't want it to be too, you want it to be sweet. That's what makes it taste root beer-ish. And there you have it. One of the best things, simple, easy, healthy, and it gives you energy. Not only does the sarsaparilla give you iron, but the agave gives you a boost of sweetness. All right, thanks so much for all the thumbs up. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have an amazing day. I know I already closed out, but then I answered another question. So make sure that was the only, yeah, that was the last one. So I'll see you soon. Thank you again. Peace. And now I have to figure out how to end the live stream. Oh, there we go.